You know what I love to see? I love to see top tier players showing us how it's done on the front line. Gets me very excited every single time. Today, representing the red team, spawning in the southwestern corner. It's going to be Fiddler112. Going for Cortex in that bright red color. All things are as they should be. Going for the bot lab right off the bat on Supreme Straits. Map we're all very familiar with. Let me clear that screen for you. There we go. Representing the blue team, a little bit further back in the midline, it's going to be Colonel Me. I uh, don't think I've seen this player around before, so making their debut on the Brightworks here as a 39 true skill silver hero. Uh, can't wait to see what they do from the midline position here. This is a bit of a weird position. You have a lot of jobs to do here. You can support the front line very early. You can uh, tech. You can go for a navy in this spot here. Uh, you can go for some sort of hovercraft or uh, even you know some other kind of run over through this lane. There's a lot of weird options that are open and available to you when you go here. So this is a little bit more of a diverse position, so I'm interested to see what Colonel Me makes of it. Going for a vehicle bay right off the bat makes me think he's probably going to help the front line. That's at least what I would go for. Fiddler doing a great job getting a resbot out on the field. Of course, going to be eating up a lot of these rocks here in the middle of the map. If we take a look at our superior metal vision here, we can see that there is over a thousand metal tied up in all of the stones here on the middle of the map. So it's a very, very... Uh, lucrative reward to eat all of them up with a res bot. They also give you a lot of energy, by the way. Let me just uh, show you that with this tool here. And you can see that when I select, there's uh, more or less 6,000 energy tied up in all these, uh, all the plants attached to the stones, right? Eating these up oftentimes dictates who wins the early game here. The early aggression can be uh, tied to whichever player manages to uh, suck up more of these rocks. And at the moment, it looks like Fiddler is well and ahead in the uh, in the rock eating category. <laughs> Now, Bloodburst is getting a couple of rovers out here after going for uh, two solar panels and three mexes. I really think windmills would have been a better choice here. Wind has been fairly high this entire match so far. Only two minutes into it, of course, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's important to keep an eye on here. And now the middle of the map is being contested here. We also see a second resbot being brought out to eat up as much of that metal as possible. Uh, rovers trying to get around. Can they get the resbot? Ooh, yeah. No? Okay, the grunts are going to dissuade them. Well, okay. Resbot thought about running into the uh, <laughs> thought about running into the arms of the the uh, rascals here. Yeah, some rovers moving underwater, by the way. That's interesting. Unique strategy there. But it will manage to get them through. All right. Interesting. Get the resbot. Get the resbot. No. Okay. Going all the way here. Curious what Colonel Me is going to go for. I guess he's going to try and get some harassment through on uh, Marine. 436, who is going to be playing as the uh, naval beachhead player for the red team here. Let's say uh, Resbot, you can kill that. I guess he really just wants these metal extractors. Oh, dies to a laser tower, though. Excellently placed by Marine, predicting exactly where that uh, rover would go on through and manages to shut it down. At this point, tons of metal has been eaten up off the center of the map here. There are a couple of rascals trying to posture here. They will be quickly flashed down by a light laser tower. Yeah, blitzes are getting a little bit postured here, though. So it's a little bit confusing, but the middle of the map is this. That's that's the midline here. So uh, Bleppers is in the right spot here. He's pushed up to exactly as far as he should be. Uh, and then Fiddler is also in the right spot here. So both of these players should be contesting. Now, oftentimes what we see is the middle drawn more like this. Um, let me draw that a little bit better. More like that. And you're, uh, you're kind of holding between these two metal extractors, right? Like you're trying to line up like this. Um, realistically, Dunskin here wants to push forward and deny this metal extractor. And uh, Glass Barbecue should be doing the same thing. Currently, though, the rocket bots here for Fiddler are doing an excellent job on the front line, showing us how to get aggressive and how to uh, keep your enemy back. You always want to be spiraling your uh, your enemy's army downwards as they're trying to spiral, spiral it upwards. And, uh, of course, one of the ways that you do that is by shutting down their units early, forcing them to reclaim them or resurrect them or uh, otherwise make some sort of tactical decision and not have those units out on the field. Shooting down these rocks is a, uh, I, I believe it's just a coincidence that that's happening, but it is nice. It's denying a little bit of reclaim here from Dunskin, who's also going to start taking rockets to the face on his commander if he just keeps reclaiming here. Rockets and lasers, I should say. Blepper's going for a dragon small. That's actually quite nice. Just one of those can shut down a lot of early game aggression. And the resbot was produced here from Fiddler as well, and I really like to see it. If you're a vehicle player, uh, consider asking your backline, especially like for instance uh, Blossom here. 
uh, consider asking for a resbot. Yeah, those uh, those resbots can can do quite a lot of uh, work, especially as a vehicle player, because you're investing so much metal on the front line, but you don't have a convenient way of eating it up. So uh, yeah, getting getting a resbot or two handed over to you can mean the world of difference here. No naval contest from Saldahor uh, or Saldor from the uh, the red team here. The orange player on the red team, the uh, sea lane position, as I like to call it. Interesting. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Killer Bunny has gone for a whole bunch of uh, dolphins. Yeah, all right. Very standard for Armada, although I think at this point, if you don't see any contest here, you have to start considering uh, maybe they're going for something a little bit cheeky here, maybe not going for a Navy. Saldor, or Sal Salad, I think it's Salador. I do apologize, Salador. <laughs> or maybe it's Saladhor. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, either way, Orange player going for the, the naval bay in this sort of, uh, well, bay, I guess. And uh, I like it. I think that's probably a really good idea here. Eat up the T1 bot lab and, uh, yeah, start uh, building the eco with the bots that you produced out of it. Very nicely done. Going to start building a, uh, I'm going to finish building a geothermal, actually. We're very, very close to finishing that up. All things considered, Sal Salador is doing a great job here. It's a lot of T1 solar panels. You're starting to scare me, the Scout 666. Starting to worry me. Geothermal coming up here, always very important. You have to be uh, very careful about what you uh, what you reclaim and what you don't, but those T1 solar panels are definitely one of those things that you should be very, very certain to reclaim as soon as you start hitting a metal shortage. I don't really like that we're going for the geothermal and the T2 at the same time. I think we probably want to uh, finish one of those projects up at a time and then use the energy from the geothermal to fund all of that metal, all those energy converters, to uh, start building that T2 a little bit quicker here. Sacrifice the commander as well to finish that up a lot quicker and then eat up the bot lab. We are eating up the bot lab, so that's nice. Blepper's doing a phenomenal job of holding on to this. Really like the inclusion here of this uh, armed metal extractor. That's very, very nice. Those uh, armed metal extractors, uh, aside from the twin laser cannons that they have on their heads, they are also very, very tanky. They can absorb quite a lot of damage, and they certainly allow you to hold that position with just a little bit less, a uh, little bit less force on the front line. Destroyer is out here. It's going to start uh, shutting down this uh, this little coastal setup that we've got going on here. Colonel Me did send an amphibious constructor over here to uh, claim all these metal extractors and set up some defenses, but a lone destroyer will easily, well, destroy that. <laughs> well, or not, actually. The amphibious constructor manages to get away. That's awkward. Construction ship is setting up a uh, little bit of a construction zone over here. Gonna go for the, some of those heavy laser towers. Commander goes down on the front line here. Guessing that's, yeah, looks like it's Blepper's commander. Blepper's commander going down is actually an issue here. That means that this area is no longer held. That's 4.3 metal per second that is not going back into the pockets of the blue team. That hurts quite a bit. Now, both of these teams want to vie for control over this as well, don't get me wrong, but uh, that metal per second, at least for now, is the real advantage here. Dragon's Maw being an absolute nuisance, shutting down these uh, units like crazy here. Fiddler looks like he's going to try and go for the reclaim here. Dangerous. There's a lot of medium tanks, but those medium tanks are going to guard it, so you could get an excellent D-gun if they overstep their bounds here. Janus's waste their shot, and I think that's going to be... Oh, okay, D-guns it. That's, that's another alternative option, but I do like that as well. Uh, Janus is firing. Ooh, down to 14%. That was so close for Fiddler. Going to be forced to back that commander off, or else it's going to suffer a nuclear wrath. Meanwhile, the artillery hell is raining down here from Dunskin, who is continuing to besiege the red player. You can see that the uh, the red army is starting to slip here without the support of T2. We definitely need to see T2 out by this point. Uh, it's a little bit late, actually. I think both teams should definitely be well into T2. Uh, the front line should get T2 first, so I feel like that's what we should be uh, sending out here from Blossom, uh, as well as from the Scout 666. The Navy is found here. Eh, start repairing it. Okay, not gonna repair the torpedo launcher. That's a bit of a blunder here. Elsa will also march forward. I figured out where uh, Elsa reminded me of, by the way. I figured out what on earth it was uh, It was reminding me of. It's uh, a game called Crying Suns. It's a uh, sort of, uh, it's similar to Faster Than Light if you've ever played that game. Um, but the commander you play as is named General Elsa. That's, uh, it, it finally clicked for me as I went and replayed a, uh, a fun, fun couple of missions on that game. Anyways, <laughs> tangents aside, the uh, army here, well, the navy here for Killer Bunny will mop everything up. And I think, 
yeah, they've done a great job of cleaning this up. Now, I'd love to see a res, res sub included in all this, of course, to eat up all this juicy, juicy metal. Torpedo launchers here doing some good work, though, starting to uh, shut down a lot of these units. Uh, can we keep the bay alive? Uh, <laughs> wow, what a close battle, but actually the bay will stay alive here, and that means that uh, for the time being, forces of Killer Bunny are going to have to retreat. She's going to have to look into a different way of approaching this scenario here. Those torpedo launcher is pretty good, although they technically fire a uh, depth charge, which is a, a, bit, of, a bit odd, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. The middle has officially collapsed here for the red team. The, uh, the blue army has caved and they've uh, hit critical mass. They've started to snowball like crazy and now Fiddler is going to be forced to use the commander as a last ditch effort to shut all of this down. Commander will die and that means that these T1 medium tanks will have their their uh, choice of the field here as they start to march on forward. Bots are all that's left here for Fiddler. T2 finally starts up here. A little too late though. Ten minutes into the game I would really expect a little bit more. Um, or at least a little sooner. Yeah, we're starting up a uh, Dragon's Maw as well, but that's not going to finish before these tanks jump on top of the entire base here. Shutting down basically everything. Those Janus is also contributing devastating amounts of firepower, and you can see that those bot labs will uh, melt away pretty quick under that combined effort. Again, those Janus is ravaging those T1 bots like it's nothing here. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> those Janus missiles went for an absolute ride. The front line has collapsed. This is uh, this is this is all she wrote here for Fiddler. He's going to have to retreat and start rebuilding in the back lines here. All of his efforts have been for naught. A uh, commander does go down on the front lines here. Who was that? As the smoke clears, we can take a look. Looks like that was uh, was that Fiddler's commander? What happened there? Was that Glass Barbecue? Must have been Glass Barbecue because Fiddler's commander. Yeah, Fiddler went down over here. So that was Glass Barbecue. Very difficult to distinguish the colors there. Very very tricky. Anyways, medium tanks are out, although the fiends are out too, and those fiends can do some excellent work against those uh, against those medium tanks, certainly. Shuriken also not bad either. No miss no uh, missilers. <laughs> no whistlers in this composition. So uh, there's not a whole lot of anti here. There is some skaters offshore, though, to try and uh, salvage what they can here. Dr. Frog trying to sneak the commander forward here. It's phasing in and out of reality, but eventually it will be able to fire a couple of D-guns off, shutting down a couple of those units. Yeah, actually killing quite a few of them. Not bad. Commander, though, does pay for that engagement with its life. Was that really worth it? Eh, I'm not so sure. Kind of a last-ditch effort, it felt like to me. Shurikens have shut down these medium tanks, so they will be uh, lasered down slowly but surely. What are we going to do to address this massive army pushing forward here? Colonel Me could definitely just ride off of the coattails of this sharp victory here by claiming all these metal extractors and then... Uh, Parking his units, making some sort of defensive line, and using the time to tech up. Indeed, it looks like that's what he will go for as a T2 vehicle bay here. Don't mind that at all. Also building some more uh, build power in the back line. Also a good idea. Air player Oracle here. Haven't seen very much out of them. Would love to see some bombing runs maybe trying to sneak by here. There is some anti-air over the water, so that's not really an option of attack. But certainly from this uh, northern perspective, you could certainly bomb maybe this geothermal plant or even just the land-based economies here of Salador. Salador does not have a lab at the mo- oh no, sorry, he's going into the uh, the naval lab, that's correct. Forgot about that. Yeah, so Salador has already gotten into a actually fairly decent sized navy here, yeah. Uh, he's got a interesting timing window here where Killer Bunny does not have a navy, uh, at least not a significant one at the moment. Couple of destroyers easily taken down by all this many Elsa. Um, yeah, that should be no problem whatsoever. Those uh, Those frigates can definitely fire away with a devastating force. I think Salador needs to go. Yeah, Salador definitely should uh, should start going. If Salador marches out right now, I think he can probably overwhelm the naval forces of Killer Bunny. That, coupled with the fact that he does have these res subs here to either patch up the army or just reclaim and rebuild in the back line here. He has enough build power to just rebuild units, so I think it'd probably be the best option here. Just make sure that more and more and more is coming out. Meanwhile, uh, it looks like Poison Taco has forfeited this area, has gone instead into the T2 lab, and is going for these tumbleweeds. These are so overpowered. They're absolutely broken on this map. You can use tumbleweeds to completely take over your sea uh, in case you've lost it and you need a way to uh, do that. The tumbleweeds are insanely powerful, ridiculously powerful. Okay, looks like we are moving out here for Celador. Excited to see this engagement because I think it might turn the tides of the naval field, although 
I say that, but more and more of these destroyers are headed out on the field as we speak here. T2 is what's coming up in the back lines here for Killer Bunny. I think her economy is going to be way better uh, in the long run here, but Celador has way more metal extractors, so Celador needs to beg and plead for his teammate to hand him a T2, because if he can upgrade all six of these metal extractors to T2, yeah, he's going to have a way better economy here. Destroyers meet their first engagement with the, uh, the dolphins here. Frigates behind that start to fire away, and uh, yeah, that's dangerous. You can see one de one destroyer goes down, another is very significantly crippled, goes down shortly afterwards, and the dolphins keep providing that sort of uh, shock value. Yeah, the Elsa making an excellent case for themselves, shutting down destroyers with relative ease. Those artillery guns, those long-range artillery guns on their uh, on their sides can definitely fire away with a ruthless effort. And that's tons of destroyers down right there. Resurrecting here. Very nicely done. Going to start resing more and more here. I think we could even uh, go a little bit harder into the res subs. What's our current composition? Three destroyers? Okay. I like to do one destroyer, one frigate, and one uh, res sub. It usually gives me a pretty decent composition. Otherwise, going for three submarines to one res sub also works fairly well. Bit weird here on the front as uh, it looks like Blossom has the forces to push in here. The Hounds can't really push in against this because uh, they don't have a radar bot to accompany them. There it is, finally. Um, but even still, the Hounds have slightly less range than the Sheldon. A little more firepower, but slightly less range, so they have a hard time engaging against Sheldons uh, as long as the Sheldons are microed properly, which is always, of course, a big if. Really like what's going on over here, though. I really think this is a uh, excellent, excellent use of the uh, naval resources here. I think uh, I think Killer Bunny could definitely eat up her labs and go into a proper T2 army. I think that transition might allow for a efficient enough trade that the economic disadvantage would be negated. Yeah, she also needs res subs. I think uh, res subs would probably be way better on the uh, the C4 here eating up these destroyers uh, than the uh, the orange subs resurrecting everything over here. For now, the red team is saved by the T2 forces coming out of its mid and back line here. You can see that uh, Piggy decided to produce some of those hounds and then is going into a uh, full-blown advanced fusion reactor transition. Would love to see a couple of uh, these con turrets taking down one of these fusion reactors to pay for the advanced fusion reactors. Always important to remember that you can swap those out for a positive trade. It's a uh, positive metal, metal benefit there. Destroyer is not getting a very good fight here, and now you can see the uh, long-range fire from those Elsa doing good work. Destroyers also that were uh, res some were resurrected, some were just handcrafted, and uh, they're also laying down that siege from a long distance. This is what I mean by the uh, naval theater being very spirally. It can it can run out of control very quickly here. Uh, you can see that with just one bad engagement, Killer Bunny has already lost the entire naval engagement. And uh, now there's enough forces from Orange in order to continually push into here. Now, the, the air forces are a little bit annoying. Would love to see a couple of skaters included here. But yeah, you can also just back off and uh, retreat for a little while, and you're going to be in a, uh, a fine position here. Killer Bunny going for those T1 gunships is quite interesting. It's a unique approach to that, but yeah, the T T1 fighters will have a field day shooting these down. Not much of a uh, challenge whatsoever to get those out of the air, and indeed those gunships will be pushed off of the uh, the fleet here. Calling in the fleet. The anti-air was starting to be built here. A couple of skaters were built, going into more Elsa. Very nicely done. Like the uh, like the strategic decision Sel Selador is going for, I think the only other benefit would be getting a T2 constructor. He certainly could have had a T2 constructor handed over to him by his, uh, his allies here, but for the time being, uh, building a T2 lab isn't going to be too bad either, especially if he eats up a lot of this metal in the C4, which it looks like he's doing, making all the right moves. You'll love to see it. Focusing so heavily on the C because uh, the middle of the map is kind of stalled out here. You can see that the blue is just trying to build up their forces here. They've got tons of Mauser already in formation, shelling away at a lot of these medium tanks. We've also got some Sheldon uh, shelling away at those medium tanks. Everybody and their mother is shelling away at something. <laughs> Gunslingers are uh, very, very useful against those T1 medium tanks, but they very rapidly drop off as you head into the T2 game because they just are outranged by virtually every other unit. They get jumped on by a bunch of fiends, and you uh, lose them. They get uh, shut down by a lot of uh, artillery units that can just back off and fire at them while they're trying to approach. 
yeah, they're, they're definitely, they definitely have a very specific timing that they're useful in, and if you don't hit that timing, you don't hit it at all. Poison Taco has gone into a naval lab himself and is actually getting a sizable navy. Looks like a bunch of hovercraft are out for now. Starting to build up those tumbleweed as well. I'm sure that's what was uh, used here in order to clear the lines. I'd love to see those tumbleweeds used again to uh, continue applying pressure here. I think four tumbleweed is probably enough to shut down an entire T2 advanced shipyard. So uh, rolling those underneath and detonating them might not be the worst decision here. Missile cruiser was brought out. This could also be shut down by these uh, tumbleweeds. Important to note. He's firing at the tumbleweeds of all things. Wow. Will this work? No way. Uh, nope, not really. <laughs> not really. Nukes are a uh, potent, potent option here. There's not a lot of anti-nuke coverage for the red team. Basically, everybody on the front line is uh, viable to be nuclearly annihilated. <laughs> there's a there's a lot of opening open areas here where uh, nukes could definitely slip through. I even slip through really. They could just be placed casually, calmly, and collectively. Go orange, go! You have a massive navy at this point. It's very uh, it's it's often very difficult to gauge whether you've won the naval battle. Um, but if you're consistently winning fights fairly easily, your trades are relatively even. Um, or or consistently positive, you've you've won the naval battle. Now pulling that trigger takes a lot of confidence. Um, it's, it's difficult to do oftentimes, but certainly uh, a skill to master. And once you once you do, it can be uh, yeah, it can be very powerful. Yep, destroyers going down instantaneously. So much artillery fire right now, and Killer Bunny has no chance. Now, this of course comes at a steep cost. You can see that 16,000 metal is now pooled into this navy, this uh, killer navy that is going to kill Killer Bunny. Bunny trying to uh, detonate the commander near the navy to try and get a little bit of value out, but you can see only taking out about a thousand uh, metal worth of navy here. Not very worthwhile at all. Torpedo bombers were sent out here, but uh, they're facing the wrath of those skaters. <laughs> Skaters, of course, the uh, light anti-airship, which is, uh, you know, they're not, they're not tremendous. That's all I'll say. They're not tremendous. Whoa! Advanced Geothermal does go down to all these. Sheldon right here pops the majority of the base for the Scout 666. I know this game goes on for quite a bit longer, but this, uh, this certainly seems like game over, right? I mean, am I wrong about that? There's tons of Sheldon here. These could certainly push in, kill these fusion reactors. You could move them into the, uh, land-based facilities for Marine 436. This is a game over moment. I don't know. I'm not, I don't know how you could hold on against this. Mouse are trying their very best to shut down these, uh, hounds, but the hounds are just taking that attack on their face and continuing to march forward. The tech spam now too overwhelming for the uh, <laughs> for the blue team to handle. Of course, a single Juno would shut that down, but uh, only do so much. Gonna res the commander here. Interesting. Always feels terrible for your own commander to be resurrected and sent back in your face. Celador definitely could use this commander to just build a massive wind farm. Just uh, queue up a tremendous wind farm and let the commander be. Also expand the economy back here. Go for, uh, go for a proper T2 economy. Looks like he's eating up a bunch of these uh, bunch of these T1 energy converters, so maybe he's thinking about it. It's definitely where his mind should be at right now, though. Yeah, T1 uh, T1 submarines are pretty good. It's not hard to get efficient trades with T1 submarines. Torpedo launchers also uh, helping out here doing a decent job of helping contribute some firepower here, shutting down some of these, uh, some of these, uh, little dolphins here, as well as the destroyer, doing a little bit of damage, scuffing all of these up, and the submarines will have no, but no hard times, uh, shutting down all of this, yeah. And there we go, that's how a T1, a T1 Navy can completely come back after, uh, shocking defeat. Poison Taco doing a phenomenal job here. Marine 436 is kind of kind of losing it here. Not really not really a tight grip on exactly what he should be going for. Doesn't have the T2 metal extractors on land. Doesn't have a T2 economy on land. That's kind of where it's biting him in the ass. As you can see that uh, Poison Taco has gone for a proper, well, not a T2 economy, but has gone for a uh, much higher degree of economy on the land. And so is going to be able to continue to produce a massive amount of resources here. 
you essentially want two constructors, one constantly building these uh, title generators and one constantly building energy converters. If you do that, eventually you're going to scale. Well, it, it'll, it'll, it's a very linear, very, uh, very slow scale, but eventually you'll hit a uh, you'll hit a plateau where you start to realize that you can just produce more units than you uh, or produce more resources than you have the units to uh, dump the metal into transition into T2 very easily or go into amphibious units. All that stuff works. It's very, very powerful. Losing a bunch of snipers on the front line to a bunch of lightning tanks here. This is a very positive trade. Turtling up like a nightmare here in the middle of the map is Colonel B. Who is uh, now, you can see, getting these uh, pulsars, those ultra-long range towers. Firing away from, well, ultra-long range. And a second one is about to come up. You can see another one was built back here. And uh, it can still reach miles, uh, miles out, but this one will solidly locked down the front line here. Oh, don't group these. Need to see these moved here. This is a, this is a little bit of overkill. Yeah, overkill. Um, yeah, we could have seen like four or five of these. You, you really want to spread tumbleweeds out. That was a really, I mean, obviously a very uh, unfortunate engagement there. Yeah, if you spread the tumbleweeds out, then the torpedo launchers have to constantly switch back and forth between what they're targeting, and eventually you'll overwhelm them. Now, speaking of overwhelming here, a bunch of hover tanks have crashed on the T1 facility. That is quite nice. Shutting down all of this is quite potent, and the uh, platypus breaking onto the land as well, trying to do a little bit of damage here. They're fight commanded, so they're stalling a little bit. I'd love to see them move commanded so they don't actually stop moving. But, uh, you know, either way is still a, a positive trade here. Uh, those submarines getting such a wonderful trade. The submarines have snowballed to the point that they can uh, fire and forget and sink any of these ships before they have ch a chance to deploy depth charges. Really what uh, our marine rather should be going for is a bunch of these Barracuda, the assault submarine. You can use about half the Barracuda to shut down this many eels, so you need about 15 Barracuda. You get a decent enough engagement and you're going to be able to uh, shut down these T1 submarines lickety split. We're trickling out tumbleweeds, but I think really we need to just uh, go full blown into building building tumbleweeds. It's a very easy way to take back your sea production, assuming your armada that is. These submarines can win the naval field here. There's there's no reason why these shouldn't go through and completely sweep away the naval uh, facilities here for. Marine 436. Again, it's that confidence, right? A lot of people are very scared of Navy. They're, it's a it's a very terrifying field. Just don't be. You, you'll, you'll be fine. Just get out there and uh, do your very best. And uh, take your engagements. You'll you'll get a you'll get accustomed to what is and isn't a good fight very quickly. Now these uh, advanced torpedo launchers are very powerful. Those should not be under underestimated. They can uh, they can shell away at these very quickly. Um, they're certainly something to be wary of. A thousand metal each, but for what you pay, you get a, a devastating, devastating uh, piece of static defense here. You can see shutting down these uh, T1 submarines with relative ease here. Two shots from each of these to kill a T1 submarine. Very brutal. It's also a little bit of a heat-seeking missile, so it kind of curves its, ar its, uh, its, its trajectory there in order to make sure that it hits its target. Very powerful stuff. So yeah, those uh, those submarines will be lost. Those T T2 uh, torpedo launchers, but not a terrible trade. I mean, we took out all of the units here at this point. What is Marine 346 going into? Ah, uh, okay. So we're going into a uh, a lab on the land here, or, or rather, a uh, economy on the land here. Not a bad move. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this game up a little bit because it uh, seems like things are starting to stall here. Little bit of aggression over here. We can see the missile ships are starting to rain down on Killer Bunny's base. She cannot be happy about that. It's always a uh, always a disheartening sight to see those long-range cruise missiles being fired out into your uh, out into your base. Not being fired very effectively, though. Yeah, kind of just firing willy-nilly. We're gonna go into a capital ship. Capital ships are a little bit of a trap. I think they're definitely too much of a metal sink. I think you can do a whole lot more with a whole lot less if you uh, just create a uh, if you just create a underwater lab and you start pumping out either those T3 units or a bunch of uh, T2 units. 
snipers here to shut down all of the heavy armor, and then uh, a bunch of grunts will continue running through here. What are we going to do to shut down these grunts? The grunts are a little bit uh, overwhelming at the moment. Tick spam is alright, I suppose, but uh, def definitely doesn't feel like the, uh, the best solution here. Maybe I'm wrong, though. Bulls also contributing si significantly here, but I guess with the sniper fire, the ticks are more than enough to uh, distract those grunts and cause quite a bit of a quite a bit of quite a bit of pain, I should say. I was gonna say quite a bit of a panic, but probably uh, I would imagine Blossom is not very panicked about losing a bunch of spam grunts. Rosebots here trying their very best to do their job. Uh, we should probably build metal extractors out here. Claim all these metal extractors. Nice big uh, build all metal extractors command. Probably be worthwhile. Wow. Poison Taco managing to get himself all the way up to a T2, a proper T2 uh, naval facility, while still pumping out T1, or well, T1.5 hovercraft in the back lane here, by the way. Interesting that he's decided not to go into a uh, T2 land-based economy. I would love to see some advanced fusion reactors, a couple energy converters, all that good stuff coming out here. He actually has no energy converters, so he's just leaking a lot of energy at the moment. I'm sure his team isn't going to complain about it, but uh, certainly, you know, he's producing the energy. He should reap the benefits, right? Meanwhile, the uh, Pulsar there does go down to a bunch of these missile ships besieging the blue players from offshore. The blue players just getting a little too cowardly here, not pushing in when they really need to. And uh, yeah, it's going to mean that the orange player has enough time to tear down all of these static defenses that were built on the front lines here. So disheartening to see those go because you put so much metal, so much time into building those, those uh, static defenses just to watch them poof away into thin air as these uh, missiles rain down upon them. <laughs> yeah, that hurts quite a lot. The backline is not as ecoed up as I would have expected here. For 32 minutes into the game, I feel like eight advanced fusion reactors is not really as good as it should be. Why are we building, why are we building pulsar, or bulwarks rather, back here? That is a waste. I, I cannot explain that one. Um, I guess he's really concerned about, like, a Marauder run by or something like that. It's fine, but uh, it's it's definitely a waste of metal. It's not where I would put my resources for sure. Eating up all this wreckage here is what funded Poison Taco's transition, by the way. Going into that T2 Navy. Must have missed an engagement here because the T2 lab is no longer with us. Uh, Marine has gone into a T2 economy on land up here. That's a bit odd. We don't usually see that, but I guess it's uh, a safety safety bastion here. Uh, again, Tumbleweed still win against this Navy, by the way. Tumbleweed, tumbleweeds beat literally everything the Navy can throw at it. It's, it's ridiculous. Tumbleweeds even beat these uh, hover tanks here. I believe it's two tumbleweeds that are self-destructed. You have to self-destruct them, uh, otherwise they don't do as much damage. But if you self-destruct them, I think two tumbleweeds, it might be three, two or three tumbleweeds can completely destroy a, uh, can completely destroy a hover tank, yeah. It's wild. They're bizarrely efficient. Only underwater, though. Once they get on land, they're pretty easy to shut down with laser towers. Juggernaut looking extremely healthy here and continuing to pr push forward here for the purple player. Finally, these Barracuda will pull the trigger and start to uh, start to try and fire away at all of the remaining seabound economy for the uh, the hot pink player here, hot pink marine. There goes basically everything. There's a lone missile ship hiding in the corner over here. <laughs> um, a bit odd that we aren't pushing forward with the units here. Like, the Juggernaut is giving us the, uh, giving the health that we need in order to sustain a front line, and then the, uh, Pulsars back here, or the Starlights, rather, can do that long-range firepower. I don't understand why we're not pushing forward at this point. Colonel Me definitely needs to get a little bit more aggressive here. I think just, uh, 30% more aggression would probably result in a much, much easier win of a game. Cataphracts are coming out here. The, uh... T1 droid tank. I always compare them to the droid tank from Star Wars. Don't they just look so similar? I guess the droid tank has more of like a cap on the top where this is sort of like a suspended, I don't know, a suspended frame, but still, I think they look very similar. You could easily see it being some sort of like prototype droid tank, right? I don't know. <laughs>
Juggernaut, I guess, just being used for posturing here. It feels a bit odd to be at this big of an advantage and be posturing with the Juggernaut. But at this, at this point, the red team has clawed themselves back into this. I mean, the Ecos are roughly similar. 1.1 thousand metal, more or less, headed back to both of these teams at the moment. So, yeah, the red team has not given up. They're not out of this game yet. Juggernaut goes down, wipes out a couple of the units here, but most of those Sheldons did back off, so the Juggernaut's frame will just remain on the ground there as the uh, the red team's units will defend it. Are we going to eat it or are we going to res it? Uh, neither, I suppose. We did go for a capital ship, just couldn't resist, could we? Go for an amphibious bay. Go for uh, go for a T3 amphibious bay and go for a bunch of marauders. This is quite nice, using the uh, commando here to build a bunch of these medium mines all over the place over here. Medium mines? Oh, they uh, are having a little bit of a glitch there. Pretty sure those are medium, medium mines anyway. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. But uh, yeah, medium mines can shut down marauders pretty effectively. Especially over here. I like to mine this entire area with medium mines. Can usually shut down marauder pushes with a devastating effectiveness. We get to these late games and a lot of times I see players, they just don't know what they should be going for. They don't know what to do. If you're in the back line, you should be ecoing like crazy. You should be going up for multiple advanced fusion reactors at a time. You should be going for multiple uh, energy converters at a time. Looks like for the most part, Xenozid is doing a good job of it. Although I think what he should do is micro this a little bit. So have it start out multiple of these, uh, these uh, energy converters here. Also, I don't think these can reach. Yeah, they can't really reach the very far back ones, so it's probably stalling him a little bit, is these back ones. It's very easy to lose track of that. I know there's action on the front line, but I promise that front line isn't going anywhere soon. Using the T2 constructors back here is also another viable option, and in that case, you don't need the build power. You just need, or, well, you don't need the build turrets. You just need build power in the form of T1 construction aircraft. So what you should do is go for about 400 construction aircraft. I'm not kidding. You should literally go for about 400 construction aircraft. Uh, and then just send these guys to go build advanced fusion reactors all over the place over here. Um, fill out this entire area. Fill this area with uh, advanced energy converters. Just go for ridiculous economies at this point, because it's the only thing that's really going to scale effectively enough. Missile ships here to tear down Marine 436's uh, little base up here. Disheartening, again, to see that. There's just nothing you can do at this point against that, so you just have to watch as your defenses slowly crumble. Does he have, uh, does Poison Taco have vision of this? Not really. Just kind of firing willy-nilly here. Mud doing a decent, decent job at it. Oh, even had some, uh, serpents here. Alright, time for Poison Taco to stop producing, uh, start producing a whole bunch of these uh, naval units and start producing a whole lot more hovercraft or a whole bunch of tumbleweeds or a whole bunch of amphibious units a whole bunch of something else because the uh, hover or the naval naval units can only go so far another juggernaut is out on the field here very healthy looking it does have these starlights for uh, long range support at this point which is good to see looks like this pulsar was rebuilt here must have been resurrected brought back to the front lines Back from the grave. <laughs> Again, Starlights are very powerful, but very explosive. You can see that they uh, have a decent explosive radius here. And you can imagine all five of these exploding in tandem. Yeah, there's not going to be very much left standing afterwards. Yeah, go, 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 go. The Juggernaut needs to push in here. It needs the support of lighter units. So I like that we have the Grunt Stream uh, pushing on in behind this. It's not really a commander in position to stop this juggernaut though. At this point, it is already getting too close to the economy of the Scout 666. I think even in an explosion, it would probably take out most of those energy converters and probably, ooh, all of the build power as well. Doesn't need to though, as it will instead just shoot its shotgun cannons out in that direction. And one, one or two lucky hits later and it'll uh, it'll destroy it all. I'm gonna self-destruct it. That's actually quite nice. I like that. That's uh, one thing that's easy to forget. But yeah, self-destructing a juggernaut prevents them from getting that extremely, extremely dense uh, wreckage field right there, right? The, the reclaim value. Um, but it also means that you get a uh, you get a much bigger explosion too. So, well worth it on both, both cases. Marine 346 in a very tricky position here. I would say what he should do is request a uh, constructor. Oh, actually he has plenty of constructors over here. Okay. Very nice. Um, yeah, I was going to say request a constructor and start building defenses on this side of the map, but it looks like he's kind of beat me to the punch there. So very nicely done. 
cataphracts are starting to roll on up the beaches, but they are being shut down by a whole lot of uh, snipers here that are shooting away from long distance. Sniper is one of the few T2 units that really just provide tremendous value well into the well into the late game. It doesn't take too many snipers to get a really, really good trade against T3 units. Five or so, I would guess. Submarines here, where did these come from? Oh, there's a T1 lab all the way over here. Okay, nicely done. Yeah, submarines able to get a decent trade against these uh, dreadnoughts, which do not have a, uh, a depth charge launcher of any kind. So they are very, very prone to attack from submarines. Certainly a T1 submarine pumping them out at this rate is uh, more than enough to start doing at least a little bit of damage to this orange navy. Yeah, you can see he just went way too heavy into the uh, into the battleships here. Did not account for a naval presence whatsoever, and that will be the capital ship falling. As well as probably a whole lot more of these ships here. A Barracuda are going to be on the production tab for Sel Celador. 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 <laughs> brutal to lose your entire uh, outpost like that, but those missile ships, I mean, that's exactly what they're meant for, is that sort of long-range besiegement. Very nicely done. Bunch of hover tanks, but they are walking right into the most defended, most heavily defended area here for Marine 345. Uh, 436, rather. I'm not... 345 Studios? I guess I'm thinking of uh, Halo now. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, hover tanks, I guess they'll take down a bulwark. That's quite nice. Uh, not going to manage to get too much further into the heart of this, I don't think, though. Oh, I really like the inclusion of these Archangels, though. That's quite nice. Yeah, going to shoot down a lot of those gunships before they themselves get blasted into obliterated smithereens. Don't fight turrets, run an eco. Yep, that's exactly right. Don't fight the static defense. Fight their wallets. Fight them, fight them where they uh, make their money. About a 200 uh, metal advantage here for the blue team. And a uh, couple thousand energy advantage. About, uh, what would that be? 9,000 energy advantage? Oh, those Starlights chain react. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Yep. One more shell from this, uh, this guy. Oh, thank goodness. We are gonna spread the, the Starlights out a little bit. Uh, oh, you can see them just chain reacting all over the place. Starlight's melting like nothing, and, uh, yeah, there they go. <laughs> Cannot group those together. They're very difficult to mass because, uh, yeah, if you, if you do that, you're going to end up with a whole lot of Starlights that are, uh, well, they're, they're all exploding on each other, all over each other. Green won the fighter engagement there by sheer volume, as these are just T1 fighters, but they did manage to, uh, shut down the T2, I suppose. And then the flag turret will clean them up immediately. <laughs> Why is that still here? That's a good question. Lunkhead's very, very good. Very uh, decent option against the uh, naval theater. They can definitely contribute quite a bit of damage here. Those uh, heavy impulse warheads they fire. What is it called? Heavy ballistic underwater cannon. Yeah, I think they can fire that shell that they, they launch. I think they can shoot that underwater. That's why it's called that way. Of course, they uh, cannot be targeted by submarines, which is their main advantage here, so they can shut those down with ease. T1 submarine production is still in full bloom. Blossom is also getting back into the water here. Oh, an excellent nuke goes down. Wipes out a whole bunch of the orange army here. Orange navy, rather, and uh, scuffs up all the rest. Very nicely done on that account. Looks like another juggernaut went down here. Continuing to press further and further. These explosions getting closer and closer. Ah, uh, looks like Poison couldn't resist going for the uh, capital ship either. It's just so, so alluring to go for. Rotter run by. Oh, this could be a game ender. This could definitely be a game ender. Oh, but the Freedom Fighter moving the commander right into position here. It's going to all come down to the D-guns from Freedom Fighter here. If these D-guns are on point, this could definitely shut down the Marauder push. If they're not... Oh, oh, very nice. Very nice. Takes out about half of them. All right, nicely done. Freedom Fighter will pay, for his, pay with his life for that engagement, but takes out about half of those Marauders, if not a little bit more. And now the static defense here will, I believe, be able to clean all this up. Pitbull's pretty good. Rattlesnakes, very good. 
And, uh, yeah, it will not be too long before these marauders do fall here. There it goes. Takes down the rattlesnake out of vengeance. Nicely done there by Freedom Fighter, though, to have the commander in the right position. Need to resurrect that commander and get it back on the field as soon as possible, though. Depth charges working away at these marauders here. What a back and forth game. What an absolute smackdown back and forth each way. Scout in trouble again as this uh, new juggernaut, fresher than ever before, starts to uh, starts to march its way forward. Everyone begging for him to degun it. <laughs> Salador is going to go in for the degun. This juggernaut should keep marching though. Degun will go down, taking down that juggernaut, disintegrating it into atoms, and removing it from the battlefield. It's a bummer these Juggernauts just keep doing that. They keep pushing forward, getting degunned, and then not managing to get very much damage done. Should definitely send them in different pathways here. Send one north, send one south, uh, and send them with a swarm of units, not a trickle. Another Marauder run by over here. Shut down eventually, but it did manage to do a decent amount of damage here. Lunkheads have also done a great job of pushing back the Navy here for Poison Taco. Once again, showing why it's really important to transition out of the water as soon as you can. As soon as you safely can, I should say. Tigers are trying to push in here. Oh, if they get the commander. Commander of the Eco here. What are we targeting? Oh, no targeting whatsoever on these tigers. What a bummer. Those tigers definitely could have done way more if they had gone after the commander, gone after the Eco. Ah, that's infuriating to see. Target by default is Y. Uh, for me, it is not, but for you, it is. <laughs> Uh, why is in Yankee uh, to tell a unit to specifically target something? Thor is out. Thor is very powerful. We all knew as much, but uh, they they are here to prove it. They also have that EMP missile. Of course, can't underestimate that. It can shut down even the sturdiest of armies. Wow, the T1 submarines have ravaged the orange player. Salador is now kicked out of the ocean by a bunch of T1 submarines. Who would have imagined? The eel showing us just how powerful it can be. <laughs> yeah, the T2 lab is down. That's, uh, oh, well, uh, oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, T2 lab will fall. That's a whole bunch of construction turrets about to fall as well, I do believe. Yep, there they go. Wow. The power of the T1 submarine. Now we need to go into a bunch of skaters to shoot down all these ships here. That would be the next option. Looks like uh, Blossom has gone into a T2 lab all the way up the chain, tech chain here. I really couldn't have predicted this match. I really wouldn't have expected the orange player to lose the C there. This, uh, this just continues to be a bizarre game. Salador finally getting a proper T2 economy up and running with some advanced fusion reactors, some energy converters, all that kind of good stuff. Big reactor nuke in uh, 30 seconds, lol. What's he talking about? Anti-nukes have been well established at this point. There's not really very many gaps to, uh, to exploit here. I don't see any anyways. I guess you can nuke this front line right here and make it very vulnerable to uh, marauders. But, uh... Yeah, I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's probably where Zeno Xenozid is going to try and fire these nukes. I'm curious where though. The question is where. Oh, well, that's quite a few more. <laughs> quite a few Cortex nukes here for uh, Blossom, who is not interested in staying in this game. Blossom wants to get out of this match ASAP. A bunch of Mammoths here to hold the front line. Mammoth's very good against that spam. They do quite a lot of damage. They have the same range as a Hound, which is 650, which is uh, just super, super far out, so they can melt down T1 units with very relative ease. A couple of these, uh, a couple of these uh, Blizzards here, not Blizzards, rather, the uh, Hailstorms. Going to drop their payload on this uh, capital ship, bringing it down to 55%, but they will pay for their lives, pay with it, pay for that with their lives, rather. Get my words in a stumble. Was that worth it? I don't think so. Um, mostly just a waste of a lot of very expensive bombers, but, uh, you know, maybe it, maybe it made Freedom Fighter feel better. 
Commander was not resurrected here, unfortunately. Well, at least I can't see it if it was. Maybe Marine. Oh, yeah, Marine 436 actually did manage to resurrect that commander, so that's good. That'll shut down any Marauder run by as they come through on this direction a little. It looks like the uh, blue team is not very interested in that. I'm a little bit curious why. It seems like uh, Marauder run by would be very powerful here. Juggernaut's also just hanging out in the middle of the map here. Don't know why we're not moving those forward. Using the Razorbacks to shut down the Thors. Thors, of course, very tanky, but enough Razorbacks will be able to burst down virtually anything. Here comes the nuke. Here comes the nuke. Boo doo doo doo. Meant to uh, slow it down, but I accidentally paused it there. <laughs> Nice. All that static defense for nothing, if you don't include an anti -nuke. Um We don't have the Marauders ready for a run by though, so I'm guessing that the uh, red team is gonna be very wary about the fact that this entire area got nuked. Probably gonna be aware of that, but uh, whoa, I just noticed by the way, 46,000 metal lying in the bottom of the ocean here. That's the remains of the orange navy. Yikes, that's a lot of metal to turn back into uh, economy. Three nukes are up in the air. Three anti-nukes are fired. Gonna take more than that in order to uh, breach the anti-nuke shield. Is that this one? Yeah, it was this one. Down to eight nukes, but I think that will be just fine. Capital ship now, raining down fire from long range. Not the worst thing ever, but uh, certainly annoying for the yellow player here. Uh, Behemoth's out on the front. Behemoth will wipe away virtually anything coming at it. It's got light lasers that do tons of damage. It's got, of course, that uh, D-Gun emulator. <laughs> D-Gun-esque gun. Uh, oh, one of the nukes, nukes does sneak through. That is going to be all that the Scout 666 had in mind. That is the, that is the end of that player's base as we know it. One nuke manages to penetrate the shield and wipe away that base here. There was actually an opening right there. We could have just nuked this little gap right here, but... Uh, Either way, one way or another, the pink player will be eliminated. Said, uh, that is concerning. <laughs> concerning is one way to put it, certainly. We have another target. We do. Going for the back line. This area is heavily protected with anti nukes, though. They were well prepared for this one. So I don't think they're going to get the same nuclear trade there. Nope. The anti-nukes are already launched and on their way. Oh, interesting. Marine 346 stashed a couple of marauders over here. Oddly enough. Wonder what those bad boys had plans for. Oh, EMP missiles must have come down here. Very nicely done. Oracle using those EMP missiles to devastating effect, showing just how powerful they can be, shutting down the majority of the forces over here. Thors, of course, are resistant to EMP. They cannot be uh, cannot be paralyzed, but still, that was a uh, that was a very very nice set of EMPs. They're allowing for a lot of those mammoths to go down without a fight. Looks like uh, Commander marching forward here. Behemoths standing against the Juggernaut, able to shoot down those Juggernauts even. Which is uh, pretty impressive, because uh, Juggernauts are pretty tough to kill. <laughs> what is the dam? What is the percent damage from a uh, Behemoth against a Juggernaut? I wonder. Hold on, we'll see that in just a minute. But I want to get a clip of this. What an epic sight! Juggernaut standing its ground. More coming in the back, by the way. Continuously marching out here. Not quite juggernauts per second, but uh, we're getting there. We're headed in that direction. You can see the eco is just continually expanding here. This is what I was talking about. You just build a bunch of constructor planes and you just have them worry about building eco. Because at some point, it, uh, it really doesn't matter how, how quickly you scale. You can't spend the money anyways. Are we still building T1 submarines? 
What is the purpose of the T1 submarines, I wonder? Boom. Massive explosion there. Does ripple the foundations of, uh, I believe that was Celador's forward facility. Hard to say, there's not much left. <laughs> oh no, it was Dr. Frogs. Yeah, he was the one building in the, in the pond over here. Dr. Frog's facilities are now turned into a, uh, a puddle in the center of the map here. <laughs> Not a whole lot left to, uh, to hold on after that. Capital ships are finally working on all this static defense over here. That's the risk you run when you build a bunch of static defense like this, is that it might just be blasted down by long-range units. The, the question I have is why on earth Killer Bunny isn't going for a Amphibious Bay? You can go for that T2 Amphibious Bay, or the, well I guess it's a T3 Amphibious Bay. Um, and you can pump out Titans or Marauders or any of those good stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, you can just walk right up the beach over here, which has, for a long while, had no static defense. Now there is finally some, as these Bulwarks and Pulsars will be built over here, but uh, feels like a massive underutilization of the humongous nuke that went down. Um, yeah, just, uh, just a bit of an oversight there, I feel. Razorbacks trying to uh, finish this game out, trying to push forward for the W here. Going to encounter the massive army of yellow, who's just A-moving a... Uh, <laughs> just got everything selected here. Trying to uh, click it all around to shut down whatever it can. And the end, the Marauder, or rather the uh, Razorbacks, not actually able to get as much damage in as I thought they would be able to. All things considered, those uh, Razorbacks didn't really do much damage, yeah. Thors, of course, have their little ears charged so they can fire their uh, their little missiles. There they go. Can you do a... Uh, oh, you totally... Wait, can you? I was hoping you could right-click and drag to get them to all fire in a line. Maybe you can if you're actually controlling them. You can't do that in Spectator, perhaps. Um, that's, that's one way to spread those out and get a lot more value out from them. Ooh, almost friendly fire at the commander there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Salador doesn't know it, but he is in the danger zone here. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I want to see it so badly. I know it's going to happen here. If Salador's commander goes down, I'm just going to assume it's because of those, those uh, behemoths degunned him. That's pretty funny. Uh, a couple of hover tanks trying to push forward here, but there's just way too much navy. Oh, getting a little laggy here. Must be some sort of uh, movement going on. Oh, I see. A nuclear movement. Uh, not this time. Not this time. Got real close, though. Damn close. But not quite. It did drain quite a lot of these anti-nukes, though. That's for sure. Torpedo boats shooting down this uh, epoch here. Nicely done. Whoa, a nuke snuck through somehow. What on earth? There was definitely anti nuke back there. I don't know what on earth happened there. Massive nuke into the back line. What on earth? Hold on, I'm going to back off a second to go look at that again. Give me one second here. So through the powers of video editing, I've uh, backed off a couple of minutes here and we're gonna be taking a look at this in a little bit closer detail. Uh, what I'm gonna do is select all of the nukes here for the uh, the blue team, just so I can see what they're targeting. Um, oh, inter so <laughs> they're targeting an airplane for some reason right now. Um, okay, let's resume this. 1x speed here. Reselect all of the nukes back here. That nuke is up in the air. I'm not sure where that one's headed. We've backed off about a minute here from when that bizarre nuke landed. Oh, is this the one? No, okay, so that goes into that area. Still have all the nukes selected, so we're looking at them. I don't understand. It just it, it went right past the anti-nuke there. Some sort of a bug or a glitch right there, unfortunate. Maybe it had something to do with the uh, attacking the plane and then attacking the uh, 
and then attacking somewhere else in the map. I'm not sure exactly, but uh, that was that was a bit bizarre. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of a glitch right there. I'm not sure exactly what caused that to happen. Maybe if a developer or something finds their way into this video, they can let us know down below uh, what exactly we just watched happen. But for one reason or another, that nuke just completely ignored the anti-nuke systems of the red team, penetrated all the way to their back line, and uh, that's all she wrote here. Bit of an odd way to win the game, but uh, I guess that's how the uh, the blue team is going to close this one out. Some sort of a cheeky nuke. There was absolutely anti nukes over here, so it was just uh, it was it was something odd for sure happening there. Something subnormal. Little bit of a scout going forward here. All of the bases for the red line have been demolished at this point. These behemoths are holding the line. 1% health on that bad boy. There goes one of them. Don't want to take that hit. They uh, they hit pretty hard. Yeah, the discussion in the chat is all about what on earth just killed the entire back line here. Uh, <laughs> however it, uh, however it uh, works, they're... Um, Somehow or another, a nuke managed to sneak through there, despite there being anti-nukes there. Yeah, yellow is not incorrect. Yellow had the anti-nukes. We all saw it there. There was tons of anti-nuke fields all over the place, especially right here where it was targeted. So I have no idea what on earth actually happened there. My best guess is that it uh, targeted one of these seaplanes fired the nuke at wherever the seaplane was, which just happened to be back in this base or something. And, uh, I guess at the, I guess it just didn't detect, the entity didn't detect that the nuke was firing into its zone. That is so bizarre. Either way, uh, you know, it's hard to say whether that's a, whether that's a good play or whether that's a lucky play. <laughs> it just feels like a glitch in my opinion. But, uh, one way or another, I think it will be the end of the red team here speed this up as much as I can. Gonna get real choppy here, but I don't think there's much more to watch. The blue behemoth now taking the hit here. Tons of laser fire as well from these uh, titans and juggernauts. Whoops, that is not the right view. There we go. <laughs> There we are. That's all I was trying to do. I'm trying to get a picture of these uh, juggernauts working it together with these titans here. Pretty funny sight there. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> I'm falling apart. It has now been like almost two hours of recording for, for me trying to record this uh, this video here. So these, uh, this, this game is right about ready to end in my mind. Should be over very shortly. They definitely didn't nuke with 17 anti-nukes. It was one nuke that managed to get through. <laughs> Blossom doesn't exploit. <laughs> I'm not saying it's Blossom's fault. I'm not saying Blossom knew what they were doing. Uh, but you can see here with the amount of anti-nukes, they, they were able to stop all of those nukes right there. Some, some sort of bug, for sure. Nice little bombing run over here. Another one, another one. Oh, come on. I believe in you boys. You can do it. Oh, well, their, uh, their death will kill some of those, I guess. <laughs> Somehow or another, these uh, Titans got EMP'd. I guess the Thors must have EMP'd all of them. Tons of epochs. Feels like I'm in Oppenheimer. <laughs> Oppenheimer IRL. Yeah, what a tragic way for the, uh, the red team to lose this. They had a competitive economy there, and they managed to bring it back as far as they could. 
and uh, they just uh, are bringing it as far as they could, I guess I should say. The blue team really did come back, at least on the Northern Sea. Um, it, was a, it was a tough battle down south, but the Northern Sea was definitely a comeback story. How devastating. Truly devastating. Razorbacks now on the back line, tearing apart whatever they can. Go on. Razorbacks a little shy, I guess. There they go. Tearing this down one by one. Slowly but surely, until none remain. Titan Brothers taking down a juggernaut. Down it goes. Massive explosion down here, though, as, uh, yeah, everything, everything sweeps away here. Marine 436, it's up to you now. <laughs> this one anti-duke fires. They found him. <laughs> Dr. Frog, well, you think this is the end? We have you right where we want you. Well, apparently right where we want you is in the nuclear payload. So bizarre. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this game. That was an extra long one. Quite a weird one, showcasing a, a glitch, I suppose. Some sort of bizarre bug. Hopefully that uh, get pa gets patched, gets addressed. Uh, somehow we figure out what on earth happened there and manage to overwrite it. Anyways, this has been The Brightworks, and I do hope you enjoy. I hope you'll consider subscribing and liking and all that good stuff down below as well. And I will see you in the very next video.